And now, entering the Hall of Fame in his first year of eligibility, the only offensive player in this year's class and the only offensive center the Oakland Raiders had in their first 15 years of existence. Let's hear it for the great Jim Otto. Jim Otto, first proud wearer of silver and black enshrined in the Hall of Fame, exemplifies the Raider organization's unyielding commitment to excellence. And now, number 16, George Blanda, is the second Raider so honored. Blanda's incredible pro career spanned four decades, from his first points in 1949 through this final touchdown pass in 1974, and then some. George Blanda helped these gallant Raiders set a standard of excellence that had the most dynamic impact on professional football and captured a nation's respect and admiration. Raiders George Blanda and Jim Otto together again in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. The third challenging decade for pro football's winningest team opened in Kansas City, where brilliant head coach Tom Flores provided drive and direction. Bold trades and drafting paid off as six new starters contributed immediately. Bob Nelson, number 51, and rookie Matt Miller, number 55, along with former Jet Burgess Owens, number 44, played tough defense, while number 33, Kenny King, supplied offensive speed. Strong arm Dan Pastorini, like King, a former Houston Oiler, found a top target in ex-Buffalo star Bob Chandler, as Oakland Raiders new and old mastered the Chiefs in game one. Game two showcased premier punter Ray Guy and special teams hitters like Jeff Barnes, Morris Bradshaw, Otis McKinney, and Captain Todd Christians. Alert Raider defenders picked off five San Diego passes and explosive pass rushers Cedric Hardman, number 86, and Willie Jones, number 90, put points on the board. The offense was spurred by talented second-year pro Kenny King, pro bowl bound in just his first year in silver and black. Dan Pastorini found a lethal partner in the incomparable Cliff Branch. And when Pastorini was shaken up, number 16, Jim Plunkett, tied the game with a last-second touchdown to fearless Raymond Chester but the Chargers hung on to deal the Raiders their first ever overtime loss. After two on the road, the Raiders opened at home against the Redskins, and Pastorini established air superiority with two scoring passes, one to number 87, Dave Casper. The silver and black controlled the action with 230 yards rushing, while tenacious team defense shut Washington down and recorded five sacks, including three by the dominating John Matuzak in a 24-21 Raider victory. Tom Flores and superior offensive assistants Sam Bogosian, Steve Ortmeyer, Bob Meshack, Lou Erber, and Ray Wilsey faced problems after two more losses. Dan Pastorini was sidelined with a broken leg, and field leadership passed to Jim Plunkett as the Raiders, now two and three, faced the first place Chargers in week six. Number 30, Mark Van Egan and speedster Cliff Branch, veterans of Raider teams judged among history's best, 
joined in a scoring avalanche. And number six, gifted number one draft choice, Mark Wilson, recorded his first completion. But the biggest play was a record run, as described by KGO Raider Radio's Bill Keane. So Pluckett will try to get him rolling from the 11. Hand off to King, outside left tackle into the secondary, takes off the 15, the 20, it's a good race for the 30. Here comes Shaw, 40, 50, Shaw gets a piece of the misses at the 30, to the 20, to the 10, touchdown Raiders! Holy Toledo! The 89-yard run, longest in Raider history, Pressured the charges, as did three sacks by Willie Jones, and a defense playing with controlled fury, led by Millen, Browning, Matuzak, and Ted Hendricks, number 83. The Raiders continually defying great odds to become pro football's winningest team, thundered toward a record 16th consecutive winning season. From Pittsburgh, a nationwide Monday night audience saw the fierce Raiders rack up five more sacks against the defending world champion Steelers, while Willie Jones and Rod Martin, number 53, turned relentless defense into Oakland points. The powerful front line gave Plunkett time to put the bomb back in the Raider attack as he went deep to Bradshaw. Chandler and Branch, and pro football's most feared and respected organization, stunned Pittsburgh 45 to 34. Innovative defensive coaches Earl Leggett, Willie Brown, Chet Franklin, and Charlie Sumner masterminded defenses for Seattle, which yielded two Lester Hayes interceptions, plus six sacks by an ominous, intimidating force in black. Jim Plunkett personified Raider precision passing with three scoring throws to Bob Chandler as Oakland destroyed the Seahawks. In Game 9, the Raiders dominated the Miami Dolphins as crafty veterans Raymond Chester and Bob Chandler scored the touchdowns. Then a hostile defense took charge as linebackers Rod Martin, Ted Hendricks, and Randy McClanahan attacked. And cornerback Lester Hayes, number 37, picked off passes. Though one of Hayes' interceptions in this game was called back he led the entire NFL in a secondary that topped the league in interception. Spirited defense overpowered Cincinnati as one of 24 Raiders in only their first four pro seasons, all-star Lester Hayes made things happen along with Monty Jackson, Mike Davis, Randy McClanahan, Dwayne Osteen, and others. Pressure football, not percentage football. As Plunkett behind Henry Lawrence, Mickey Marvin, and Steve Sylvester went long to Rich Martini. But the game breaker with blocks by Derek Ramsey, Lindsey Mason, Mario Salato, Todd Christensen and others was Arthur Whittington's 90-yard kickoff return, ensuring a fifth straight Raider win, 28-17. Week 11 found the Raiders in Seattle, where Arthur Whittington found a less direct route to the end zone. Crucial to this game were aggressive special teams, including Rich Martini, Keith Moody, and number 56, Jeff Barnes. Inspirational performers like Dwayne Osteen, Joe Campbell, and perennial Pro Bowl selection Ray Guy confounded Seattle while fiery Lester Hayes and Ted Hendricks forced a fourth quarter safety. 
Talon did tight and Derek Ramsey fought Goldworth. And blockers like Derek Jensen and Bruce Davis fought off the Seahawks, while Chris Barr kicked a last-minute winning field goal. Losing in Philadelphia set up week 13's Monday night test as Reggie Kinlaw and the battle-hardened defense limited Denver to just three points. Superb plays such as an Ira Matthews punt return, interceptions by Osteen, Owens, and Hayes, and Plunkett scoring run helped the Raiders conquer Denver to earn an all-time pro record 16th consecutive winning season and maintain their incredible Monday night record. Also symbolic of excellence, the Gorman Award was presented to Ted Hendricks as the player who best exemplified the pride, poise, and spirit of the Raiders. A loss to Dallas made remaining games must win as the Raiders drove for their 11th playoff season since 1967. In Denver, field goal trickery was anticipated perfectly by skillful Burgess Owens, who gave Oakland six early points. Then Bob Chandler continued his wizardry with two more touchdowns as the Raiders prevailed 24-21. Another must-win in Frigid Giant Stadium, where these Raiders, downgraded and criticized by skeptics early on, proved again that second effort is first nature for wearers of the famed silver and black. Turnovers became triumph, 33-17, as the Raiders scored in their 214th consecutive game, clinching a wild-card playoff berth. The final touchdown came as an onside kick was alertly turned into six points by Derek Jensen. Since 1963, when Al Davis pledged to build the greatest organization in sports, Raider commitment to excellence has earned nine division championships, an AFL championship, two AFC championships, and two world championships. Total domination a professional football in terms of consistent victory. Unyielding will to win had earned the underdog Raiders their place in the sun. All were ready for the playoffs, from trainers George Anderson and Rod Martin to Captain Gene Upshaw. It all starts this week, one game, one game, and one game. All you gotta do is win. You lose, you go home. But we're going to the Super Bowl in 1908. To achieve Super Bowl glory required beating three of the best, starting with the Houston Oilers and football's top rusher, Earl Campbell. With Campbell checked, defender zeroed in on quarterback Ken Staple. When Ted Hendricks was not snuffing the snake himself, he was springing teammate Mike Davis, who had two of Oakland's seven sacks in an awesome display of control and confidence, design and execution. The Raiders unleashed their feared five-man passing game as Mark Van Egan picked up a blitz and Jim Puckett hit halfback Kenny King deep to set up a touchdown by Todd Christensen, one of 10 second-year pros on the Raiders squad. In the final quarter, Plunkett behind Dolby, Upshaw, Archell and company, isolated halfback Arthur Whittington on a linebacker, and Houston hopes tumbled. The crushing blow was administered by the defense which draped Stabler in silver and black, while Lester Hayes went up for one, then took off for six. Over three decades, the names have changed, but Raider commitment to excellence has grown stronger. 
and coach Tom Flores has continued to add to these years of greatness. The weather, it is brutal beyond belief. The wind chill factor at this moment here on the lakefront in Cleveland is minus 36. It's treacherous going, but as they say, both teams have to face the same conditions. Surprisingly for the experts, it was the Raiders who calmly ignored the elements in the playoff against the Browns. Quarterback Brian Seip was cooled by defensive captain Ted Hendricks, Dave Browning, number 73, and the mind and muscle of Raider defense. Wind, cold, and ice were challenges prepared for by equipment manager Dick Romanski. And for Plunkett, Chester, Branch, Chandler, King, Van Egan, and the big line of Shell, Upshaw, Dolby, Marvin, and Lawrence, it was time to again prove that under those battle-scarred silver and black helmets were warriors whose deeds would add to the great traditions of the Oakland Raiders. Speed, drive, and contact courage by Kenny King gave the Raiders prime position, which Art Shell, Gene Upshaw, Dave Dalby, and the troops used to propel Mark Van Egan into the end zone for a go-ahead fourth quarter score. But in the final seconds, jubilation became concern. A scouting operation, Newsweek magazine, labeled one part fanaticism, one part CIA, and one part genius, had produced tough safety Mike Davis, who made the big play. As this organization, built with the support of respected general partner Ed McGar, steadfast limited partners, executives Al Lucasau and Ron Wolf, doctors Don Fink and Bob Rosenfeld, and a superb staff would not be denied. And so these remarkable Raiders, picked for last in the West, roared into hostile San Diego for the AFC Championship game. In a classic contest, the Raiders struck first when a deflected pass was alertly turned into a 65-yard touchdown by Raymond Chester, number 88. Following a meticulously prepared game plan, Jim Plunkett rolled right and hit Cliff Branch to set up another score. Silver and black precision passing produced a third touchdown on a picture-perfect strike to a wide-open Kenny King. The offensive line and Derek Jensen blasted a runway for Mark Van Egan as the Raiders scored touchdown number four. Ted Hendricks, Willie Jones, John Matuzak, Dave Browning, Cedric Hardman, Reggie Kinlaw, Joe Campbell and company attacked San Diego relentlessly, creating interception opportunities for daring pass defenders like Burgess Owens, number 44, Lester Hayes, number 37, and combative Dwayne Osteen, number 35. Intense man-to-man -man coverage by Monty Jackson, number 42, and Otis McKinney, number 23, helped forge a silver and black shield against a celebrated passing attack. The final quarter featured the field goal accuracy of Chris Barr 
and a decision to pound out the game's final minutes by giving the ball to pressure-proof all-time rushing leader Mark Van Egan, number 30. It is all over. The jubilation begins. The Raiders are bound for the Super Bowl for the third time. Climaxing one of the great stories in football in recent years, the total resurgence of the silver and black. New Orleans, here come the Raiders. The Super Bowl, football shining hour, earned by the class and courage, the sweat and blood of proud giants. Tackle, Henry Lawrence. Guard, Mickey Mark. Santa, Dave Dalby. Guard, Gene Upshaw. And tackle, Art Shell. And skilled, fearless receivers like Bob Chandler, Raymond Chester, and Cliff Branch. Gifted runners like Mark Van Egan and Kenny Keene, and a resourceful field general like Jim Plunkett. These AFC champions in silver and black were an aggressive, intimidating force against the favorite Philadelphia Eagles, creating four turnovers, committing none. Rod Martin's early interception foretold Raider domination to over 100 million viewers. From all angles, the varied Raider offense attacked and pressured, as Jim Plunkett and Cliff Branch quickly provided the game's first touchdown, followed just minutes later by a second. Branch to the left against Edwards, Chandler to the right. Plunkett on a straight drop back. Here comes the rush, steps up. Can't find anybody yet. Tits off running to the left. Rolls on the move. And it's caught by King at the 40. King takes over the 50. He'll go all the way. Nobody knows. To the 20, to the 10, to the 3. Touchdown Raiders. Kenny King's record 80-yard touchdown was the first half offensive gem. While rugged Bob Nelson, Matt Millen, Reggie Kinlaw, and Dave Pear anchored an interior defense that grounded the Eagles and then denied a seemingly sure field goal as the Raiders led convincingly at the half before blowing Super Bowl 15 wide open at the start of the third quarter. Branch to the left, Chandler to the right. Play fake, plunk it back, sets up deep with time. Looking, going deep to Chandler and a crossing turn. makes the catch at the 40, out of bounds on the 30. Back is Plunkett, time to throw. Deep to the end zone to Branch. It is caught by Branch, touchdown Raiders! Cliff Branch is second touchdown catch of the day. Holy Toledo! The world had learned what the Raider organization already knew. This game, this season, this league belonged to the Oakland Raiders. Rod Martin added his record-breaking second and third interceptions as these unconquerable Raiders won still another world championship of professional football, a crowning glory to three decades of destiny. Crescendo of Raider fans beginning to rise. Seven, six, five, silver and black football is king of the hill in the National Football League. The Oakland Raiders are the champions of Super Bowl 15. Oakland 27, Philadelphia 10. We were the best team. We deserve to be world champions. Woo! I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. You know, when you look back at the years of glory of the Oakland Raiders, but this was our finest hour. This was the finest hour in the history of the Oakland Raiders. To Tom Flores, the coaches, and the great athletes, you were magnificent out there today. You really are. And take pride and be proud. Your commitment to excellence and your will to win will endure forever. You were magnificent. Yeah.